name is Katrina Preston, but you can call me Kat. I'm the Education Production Coordinator for the Black Hills Playhouse, and today we're going to learn how to use art to make theater happen. In this video, I'm going to help you understand how you can use your surroundings to really enhance a story. First, I want you to think of your favorite movie or TV show or even a play or musical. Picture your favorite scene. Now imagine that the actors are just wearing normal clothes and they're performing in an empty room. You'd still understand everything. The story would be great. The acting would be great, but it loses something. It's more fun to see the actors interacting with their props and their costumes and their scenery, don't you think? So in this video, you're going to learn how all of those elements come together to really make a show even better. And you'll even get to design your own costume. What do you think of when you hear the word art? Maybe you think of a beautiful drawing or a detailed sculpture or even a colorful painting. These are all great examples of art, but did you know that art can be so much more? Art is anything you create to make the world a more beautiful place. It can have a deeper meaning or a story behind it, or it can just be something that you think is pretty. Making art helps build your communication and creativity. And these are very important skills to have as an adult. So you met Dan and Deb, and they talked a little bit about what they do to help bring the show to life. My job is a little bit different, although all of our jobs are important and we work together as a team. My job is to make sure that all of the technical elements help enhance the show. Enhance means to take something great and make it even better. I help enhance the show by making sure that all of the actors have costumes that match their characters and that they have props that are real they can interact with and making sure that the scenery really makes the audience believe they're looking through a window into the world of the show. Let's talk about some of the other jobs in theater. The people I want to talk about today are designers. The scenic designers are responsible for all of the scenery in the show. This can be a couch in a living room or a spaceship. It can even be a grand ballroom in a castle. The costume designers, they're responsible for anything that an actor wears. This can be a space suit, a superhero suit, or even just pajamas. The props designer is responsible for anything that an actor handles, like a sword or a telephone or even food like donuts. Sometimes things can fall into more than one category, like a backpack. An actor can wear it, so it's a costume, but then they put notebooks into it, so it's a prop. And then they hang it on a hook on the wall for the rest of the show, so it's part of the scenery. Because of this, Designers have to work really closely together to make sure that each design looks like part of a whole picture. The best shows have designers that work really, really well together. Now that you know a little bit more about designers, let's talk about how you can bring the Savannah to life at home. You need to know the design process. Step number one, know the show. Know the script and know the characters that you're designing for. Know what you're designing. Step number two, find research images. These can be pictures that inspire you, it can be exactly what you want to create, or it can be pretty colors that you want to use in your design. Step number three, use these images to create a mood board. You can have a mood board for the whole show, or if you're working on costumes, you can have a mood board for each character. If you're working on scenery, you can have a mood board for each scene in the show. Step number four, draw your design. This is important because all of the designers need to communicate what they want their designs to look like. Step number five, adapt your design. Your design may not work well with another designer's vision, so you have to adapt it just a little bit to make sure everything looks like a part of the whole picture. Now that you know a little bit more about the design process, let's go ahead and start designing. I'm going to transform myself into a gazelle. You can choose any animal you want, and if you need some inspiration, you can go back and watch our first video, the virtual performance of X's for Zebra. There's some great ideas in there. Take a look at this gazelle. Tell me what you see. First, I see the horns. I mean, obviously, how can you miss those? Next, I see the tan and brown fur and the black stripe running along the side. You know, I think I have some clothes that'll really make me look like this gazelle. I'm gonna go try them on. I'll be right back. Now, I know this isn't what a gazelle actually looks like, but 
The colors are very similar, and I like to think this is how a cool gazelle would dress. I am missing horns though. Let's see what we can use to make horns using just what we have around the house. So to make my gazelle horns, I'm going to need scissors, tape, twine, two paper towel tubes, newspaper, and brown craft paper. So first, you're going to take your two paper towel tubes and you're gonna cut a hole on either side of the base. This is where it's gonna sit on your head and the string is gonna run through it to tie it nice and close to your forehead. Be very careful with the scissors. Ask for help if you need it. Next, you're going to cut a length of the twine that will wrap around your head. So you wanna make sure it's nice and long. I'm gonna test this. I wanna make sure there's enough that I can tie it in a bow. So I'm gonna cut it right there. Right. Next, we're going to feed the twine through the cuts we just made in the tube. Sometimes it's easier said than done. There's one. Those will sit beautifully right there. Good. All right. Next, we're going to rip two sheets, two strips of each color paper. You can cut them if you want. I prefer to rip them because it gives a nicer texture. And it's okay if they aren't even all the way down. So next, I'm going to have a piece of brown craft paper and a piece of newsprint paper for each horn. I'm going to take your tape and tape one color over the side where your twine comes out, right there. You can use more than one piece of tape too. And you're gonna twist it around the tube and you can twist the paper as you go. Gives it some fun texture. When you reach the top, go ahead and put a piece of tape on it. And you can take the tube and squeeze it in and start to twist it into the shape of the horn. You can also tape the paper at the top again to help hold the shape. Next, you take the brown piece of craft paper and you're going to tape it over the other side where the hole was. And 
you're going to start twisting it in the same direction as the first one. Sometimes it takes more than one piece of tape to hold it in place. in place. And you can squeeze the paper towel tube to kind of shape it how you want it. So then you'll just repeat it on the other side. If you want to make them look symmetrical, you'll have to twist around the tube in the opposite direction. And the brown craft paper on the other side. And now, we're going to tie it on our heads. And you can bend them and reshape them however you want to make sure that you look most like your gazelle self. And now we have our horns. We're going to look at the savannah and what makes it such a unique place. Isn't it beautiful? What are some things you notice about it? One of the first things I notice are the trees and the grasses. They look a lot different than the trees and grasses I see around my house. I like how the sun behind the tree makes it look like a dark shadow. I notice that the grasses are tall and thick, and that makes it easier for animals to hide in. If we wanted to put these things on stage, we'd make them big enough for human actors to hide in and behind. But that might be a little bit hard for you to make at home. Plus, where would you even put it? To make things a little bit easier, we're going to make small versions of the big set pieces you might see on stage using things you can find around your house. Let's go. To make your savanna grasses, you'll need an empty yogurt cup, green paint, a paintbrush, an X-Acto knife, be careful with this one, and a green sheet of paper. To make your savanna grasses, you'll need your green paint and your empty, cleaned out yogurt cup. Now, you'll have to peel it. I already have one peeled here. So you're going to go ahead and start painting it. This one could take three or more coats of paint to make it really nice and dark. So, once you have your yogurt cup painted and it's all nice and dry, you're going to use the X-Acto knife to cut holes in the top. Now be very, very careful. Ask for help. I'm just gonna cut little crosses in the top. I do three little crosses there, and it's okay if some of the paint chips off. It happens. So next, make sure you put your cap back on your knife. You're done with the knife, so you can put it back somewhere safe. Next, you're gonna take your green paper, and you're going to rip off some strips. As you can see, I've already used part of this, but it's still usable for the rest of it. And they don't have to be even. You can have short ones, long ones. So what I like to do is crumple them just a little bit, not too much, but just enough so you can tell they might be a grass. <laughs> and you're going to stick that into 
the top of one of your little slits there. It's okay if they curl too. And if you have some grass left over, you can make even more. Isn't this fun? Now you have your own little savanna grasses to do your show at home. To make your acacia tree, you'll need cardboard, a black Sharpie, scissors, black paint, a paintbrush, and a sheet of orange paper. So to make your acacia tree, you're going to want to get some cardboard and draw your outline of your tree. I've already drawn mine here, so I'm gonna start cutting it out. Once you have your outline cut out, you'll trace it so that you have an exact copy. You need two of them painted black. It's an exact copy. You'll wanna paint it black on both sides and on the edges. So for one of them, you're going to take your scissors and be very careful. You're going to cut a slit down the middle from the top of the tree all the way to the middle of the trunk, right there. And on the other one, you're going to cut a slit from the bottom of the trunk to the middle of it. So then they will fit together like this. And they'll just slide into the slots. So they'll slide together in their slots and the tree will be freestanding. And you'll take your orange piece of paper, and that's your sunset. And now you have a beautiful acacia tree against a sunset. There are a lot of unique instruments that come from Africa. One of my favorites is called a shikere. It's made from a gourd that's been dried out, cut open, and cleaned out. A gourd is a type of vegetable that grows on a vine like a squash or a pumpkin. How cool is that? You can make music with a vegetable. After the gourd is dry and empty, beads are woven into a net around the outside. This makes the noise that sets the beat for the music. To make your shikere, you will need a jar, paint, it can be whatever color you want, a paintbrush, yarn, I like the multicolor, it really makes it pop, beads, and scissors. So to make your shikere, take whatever color paint you've chosen and start painting the outside. It may take three or more coats of paint, but it's important to let the paint dry in between coats. So once your paint is dry, you're going to take the yarn and measure out how much yarn it takes to go around the outside of the top. Leave enough so that you can tie it. I'm going to cut mine right there. Don't tie it just yet. And you'll want to figure out how long your side pieces need to be. One, two, three, and four. So that's gonna be a good length. Trim it off there. And 
So they'll be tied along this string about an inch apart. So I'm going to need one, two, three, four, five, six pieces of yarn this length. And six. So go ahead and move your yarn out of the way. You'll be done with it for now. So you'll want to find the halfway point for each piece that you just cut. This is the point where you're going to tie it on to the string you used for the neck of the jar. So this part can get kind of tricky, just be really patient with it. It's okay if it takes a while. Do one knot and two knots. If it helps, you can also tie it around the bottle and then tie these on. So once you have your six strings tied along your first piece, you might want to grab that first piece and it should look like this. Now you're gonna take this top piece and tie it around the neck of your jar. All right, so it looks like your jar has hair. What you're going to do is separate the strings in each spot. Go ahead and pour out your beads. At each point where there's a split where the string is tied, you'll take the left one and you will put a bead on it. String it all the way to the top. Now the important thing is you take the string to the left of it, not the one that is part of it and tied at the knot. You'll take the one right next to it. And you will tie a knot. Tie it twice. And let those drop. So now you'll move to the next one in the V and you will add another bead onto it. Pull it through. And tie it off. Once you finish going all the way around the top of the jar, you will start in on the next layer. Now the next V will look a little different. This is gonna be your next V. So you'll take the left one, and you'll tie it off using the right side of the next V. Now this could take a while, and I want you to be creative and make your own shikare but I will show you a finished one that I made. So real shikaris, as you learned, are made out of dried, emptied gourds, and they are African instruments. They're percussion instruments. I spin. I'm still learning how to play the shikare. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you had as much fun as I did. Be sure to check out the Black Hills Playhouse on Facebook and YouTube, or head over to our website, www.blackhillsplayhouse.com, for more videos and updates. See you next time.